and welcome back to Outsourced Accounting Insights. I am your host, Will Tatro, and I'm here with a very special guest today, uh, a principal within our valuations practice group, Seth Weber. How are you doing today, Seth? I'm great, Will. How are you? Thanks for having me on. I'm fantastic. So valuations, kind of, do you want to give us a little background on yourself and then what led you, because valuations is newer within Barry Dunn, so what led you to start with the valuation service group and a little background there? Yeah, so I um, started at the firm in 2007. There's a valuation group here ahead of time. The, the newest pieces that we've added on are value acceleration and, and also doing a lot of work with mergers and acquisitions and transaction advisory. And we'll, we'll talk about those in a little bit. So I came to Barry Dunn with a background in doing um, some turnaround work, doing some acquisition strategy for private companies, had worked for a national consulting firm doing mergers and acquisitions and post-merger integration work. And, and I actually started my career as an engineer. Wow. Uh, and so I bring a whole bunch of different, like kind of random parts and pieces to play. And what we love about that in the valuation world is it gives me a lot of different perspectives on on companies. And so, you know, I can dig into the finances, we can dig into the operations, we can think about like, you know, what markets are going after, what clients are going after and what that all means. Um, and since joining, you know, I think I was the third person in the group. We've got nine people now that do valuation full time. We focus on privately held companies. So we're not doing valuation of publicly traded companies. That's one of the things that people often think like, oh, you guys do valuations. Like what's Apple stock doing this week? Not sure, hopefully going up. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time working with a privately held businesses. Um, a lot of times they're family held. Um, they could be owned by an investor group. And it's a lot of fun because it's always different. Um, we had a meeting just earlier this week and, and the two folks that own the business that we're talking to said, geez, we're really impressed because usually we get about three minutes in on what we do for a living and people's eyes roll back in their head yeah. and, and we've lost them. But like we, we love learning about new businesses and, and that's what we do all the time. Awesome. Yeah. And quite a journey to create what is the valuation group and or, yeah. or kickstart further the valuation group with Barry Dunn. So can you give us a little insight into the new the new areas, the new areas that are being provided. So one of the things is, um, I'll start with the uh, transaction advisory services. So one of the things that, you know, the benefit, the beauty of being at Barry Dunn is we've got this deep bench strength yeah. in, in all these different areas. And so like, um, you know, we've got some just phenomenal tax professionals, um, you know, partnership tax, uh, inter you know, state and local tax, international issues. We've got this great deep bench on the audit side. And so we've been working with a lot of clients doing different things around mergers and acquisitions, but never really kind of pulled it all together. And mm -hmm. so over the past couple of years, we've been doing more and more work with um, what's called a quality of earnings analysis. So like really digging into people's financials, understanding like, you know, where some of the ad backs might be or where some of the discrepancies might be or what judgments have they made or, or used in their financials and how that impacts the reporting and the presentation. Um, so that's been great, really good reception from clients on that. Um, we've actually worked with some clients that are overlap with, with your guys' group. Yeah. Um, the other overlap with your guys' group, specifically around that transaction advisory services, is just you know, one of the things that always comes up when people are going into a transaction is that you want to put together a data room. Right. And part of the thing is trying to keep the potential buyers inside the data room. And so what that means is like, have we put everything in the data room? Is it preloaded with all the kinds of things that people are looking for? And is the information internally consistent? And so there have been a couple of times um, recently where, Working with OAG, you guys have been able to go in and create monthly closes yep. to go back like two years in history so that if somebody wants to come in, they can look at, you know, 24 month end closes on a consistent format, consistent basis, 
and start to gain some confidence with like what are the systems that 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 target company has. Um, so so that's been really interesting. And again, driven by you know what do our clients need and how can we serve them better. And so it's really just a repackaging of things that we've always done here at the firm. Um, another area that's new was value acceleration. Yep. And again, you know, um, this has really been driven by, you know, mostly working with privately held companies. And, you know, what we know is that um, there are more and more baby boomer owners out there that are retiring each and every day. So the statistics nationwide, believe it or not, is that there are 10,000 baby boomers a day that are retiring. So with that much transition, it's this question of like, well, what do I do with my business? Am I transitioning it to my kids? Am I transitioning to a management team? Am I selling it outright? Um, Are we going to continue to own it, Um, but we're going to turn the operations over to somebody else? Like, what does that all look like? 90% of business owners, when they're surveyed a year after their transition event, 90% 90% of them say that they profoundly disappointed with the route that they chose. Mm-hmm. And what we know is that most of those business owners haven't done all their homework into what their exit options are. So value acceleration is really turning the whole process around. And so it's starting with like, what's my company worth? What else do I have for assets? Like what's my personal financial statement look like? And then what is it that I'm trying to achieve? So if we can answer those questions, that's the beginnings, the basis of a plan. Then we can move into a next phase, which is really around trying to assemble some of the proof around like, okay, so we think my business is worth X. How do I know? So how do we start to pull together the the artifacts, if you will, or the data that supports that position? Um, and then as we dig into that, are there things that we can do to actually help drive the risk down that, because if we drive risk down, we'll push value up. Right. Once we understand what the company's worth and what are some of the things we could do to make it more valuable, then we ask the question, okay, now that you know all this, what do you want to do? Are we keeping the business? Or are we selling the business? If we're keeping it, how do we make it even more valuable? If we're selling it, then what's our time frame look like? And then what do we start to think of, of investments before the sale? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that work, again, directly working with business owners, really rewarding a lot, yeah. of, a lot of fun. So with something like value acceleration, like there seems to be several steps that leads up to the point where you can even start making a decision on what are we going to do with the business? So what would you say is the ideal lead time if, if you were a client to um, get a desired result from um, value acceleration? You know, it's a, it's a great question, Will, because when I started in valuation, you know, we'd often go and meet with business owners and say, hey, when are you thinking about transitioning your business? And because they knew that we typically looked at like a five-year forecast window, mm-hmm. they would almost always answer five years from now. And then the next year, it would still be five years from now. Um, What we're finding is, particularly if you want to do an outside sale and maximize the value of your business, five years is probably a good runway. Mm -hmm. Meaning, even though you think five years is a good joke to like kick the can way down the road and and not have to deal with us, um, five years is a great time frame because what we could do, think about what we could do in those five years. So we could start to get a baseline of where your company is today. We could start to do some benchmarking against what does your company look like compared to peers. If there are areas where you're not that competitive or your expenses are a little bit out of whack, we could start to work with you to dial those those cost structure pieces in, which even if you didn't grow, but you dialed in that cost structure over a five-year period, yeah. now you're showing a five-year improving trend in profitability. Right. Which if you're going to go to market and sell, you know, sell that five year improving trend is going to be a huge selling point. Yeah. So, you know, ideally five years would be great. My favorite client came in when he was 50 Mm -hmm. and said, I just turned 50. I want to be done when I'm 60. And turns out he had a high cash flow business. And that's when we, 
we should have known, but it really kind of cemented the fact that with enough time and enough cash flow, there are very few business problems that we can't solve. And right. so we were able to actually accelerate his time frame because he had always invested almost all his money back in the business. Mm-hmm. And so we started talking with him about like, hey, how are we going to ramp up some of your retirement savings? How are we going to start to diversify some of your holdings? How are we going to start to think about like what a buyer might actually want in your yeah. business versus some of the stuff that's here um, and really start to position things well. And so um, 10 years, ideal, five years, great. Oftentimes, you know, we'll have people who will come to us and say, we want to be out in under a year. You talk about the transactional services. There's this incredible valuation service, acceleration service. That's yep. also been a key new piece um, where do you see the valuation industry moving forward? Well, so there's there's four big parts to what we do as a group right now. And and so I do want to touch on uh, two others. One is just trust and estate oh, yep. valuation. So people who are doing a, you know, estate planning or doing gifting. The reason I bring that up is right now we have historically high federal estate tax exemption limits. And they're set to sunset um, 1231.25. So at the end of 25, those those rates will drop roughly in half. So it's a great opportunity for clients to to now be doing some estate planning and moving some of that excess value if they're going to have a federally taxable estate. So that's driving a lot of the work we're doing um, on the estate planning side. There's not a ton of gifting going on right now because I think people are kind of setting the stage and preparing for that. I would say it's a good time to think about some of that gifting because as interest rates have gone up so much over the past 12 to 18 months, that as interest rates go up, it drives up cost of equity and actually drives value down. Yeah. So it's a good opportunity to get more bang for your buck, move more value um, for the same dollar size gift. Another big part of our practice are employee stock ownership plans. Mm -hmm. Um, that's an exit plan tool that has waves of popularity. But again, given how many baby boomers are thinking about retiring, it seems to be coming back around. So we spend a lot of time working with uh, people to understand, like, is an ESOP right for them? Like, what kind of value might they get? Pulling together a team of advisors to help put an ESOP in place. We also work for trustees. So when somebody's decided to put in an ESOP, we, we get brought in to value the company that's going to go through the transaction um, and then do hopefully recurring valuations every year after that. So where do we see our industry going? Um, I don't think the trust and estate work is, is going to go away. Um, it, the volume of it went down significantly, but the complexity went up significantly as federal estate tax limits rose ESOP valuation is interesting. Um, people either tend to do quite a bit of it or none at all. So we do quite a bit of it. Um, we spend a lot of time and effort staying plugged into the ESOP community. Um, transaction advisory, that comes and goes in waves. Um, there are not a ton of valuation groups that have gotten that deep into it. I think one of the things that makes our group different and very done different is the the way that we can easily collaborate across groups right. and bring the best resources to bear to solve a problem. So that's been a huge differentiator. And then the value acceleration, um, there are more and more people who are getting certified each and every day to do exit planning and really work with business owners. Um, not a ton of them are valuation folks. Mm-hmm. And so it does put us you know, into a pretty shallow pool um, the other thing that we're seeing within the industry, there are a ton of credentials out there. Um, we have a lot of people. Who, we have three CFAs, chartered financial analysts on the group, um, and more people who are working toward it. That's, that CFA designation is usually held by people who are doing equity research or um, you know they're doing research at wealth management or investment houses. We have a number of people who are accredited senior appraisers. That means that we have five years full-time experience in our field in business valuation. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing a deeply credentialed bench to bear to help solve these client problems. That's an industry trend also. 
where people are getting very specialized and getting a lot of credentials because of problems around valuation. They're complex. Right. Um, and part of our role is to help make them approachable and understandable. In terms of like that, well, we talked about the types of work, but industries we work with, it's really all across the board. Yeah. The one industry we don't touch that much is banking because banking has its own language, lexicon, and way of thinking about things. But, you know, again, we're very active in the valuation community. And so we can point people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, we like to think that, you know, if we can't help a client solve a problem, we can at least get them one step closer to the answer. Right. So we still want to be a, a clearinghouse to help solve their problems. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and I guess, so kind of piggybacking off of that with groups like valuations, I know this happens with the outsourced accounting group all the time too. You know, when outsourced accounting, people will go and say, oh, well, look, it's a group of bookkeepers. So <laughs> when it's a completely different business than that, right? right. Um, so what would you say is one of the biggest misconceptions so, of the valuation group? Yeah, that's a great question. There, there's, there's probably two. One is um, we do not appraise real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you want to know what your house is worth, um, I suggest you do what I do, go to Zillow or, <laughs> you know, Redfin or something like that. Like, it's just that that's not our our area of expertise. Um, and, yeah, the other is, um, you know, and this is different across the industry, but our group, we we actually don't have any CPAs in our valuation group. Mm -hmm. um, so valuation. um the work that we do all, believe it or not, builds off of this revenue ruling from the IRS from 1959. And we don't often think of the IRS as being great authors, um, but there's this wonderful phrase in that rev ruling that says valuation is a prophecy as to the future. Yeah. And so in our group, um, yeah, we're really forward thinking. We spend a lot of time thinking about forecasts. We think a lot of time thinking about projections. We think a lot of times, spend a lot of time thinking about sensitivity of all of that. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of times in accounting, it's really that historical view of like what happened and what did you put together? So we're not CPAs. Um, one of the misconceptions from some of our CPA brethren is that we don't understand financial statements very well. I would argue the opposite. Um, we're really deeply plugged into financial statements and how they work because that drives a lot of our forecasting activity. Um, we are probably the one group that really, really likes statement of cash flows because we think it's like highly relevant to the work that we're doing. Yeah. Um, so we could do a whole probably hour on, you know, the much, much maligned statement of cash flow on how it's actually like a really good and important financial planning tool. Um, and um, the other misconception, I mean, I joke about it because, you know, my first career was in engineering. So we really like, you know, English is my second language. Numbers are my first language. <laughs> uh, but we do spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to make the topic approachable yeah. and understandable so we do a ton of writing um in in our in the valuation group and so for a group that's so numbers driven that's the thing that people find surprising is like wow you guys actually you know turn out quite a bit of reports why is that and it's like well we've got to document what we did right. and we have to do it in a way that people can follow and that, that it makes sense right bilingual in that way <laughs> english to english translators <laughs> yeah um so speaking of writing um you did have a book you wanted to talk about yeah so one of the guys on the team casey carlson and i wrote a book called a field guide to business valuation and it's really it's designed not to turn people into valuation experts but it's designed for business owners and people who are leading privately held companies so that they can understand what this valuation thing is. And so it's, um, you know, it's a little bit like trying to shine a bright light on the curtain so you can see, you know, where Oz is actually standing and which levers he's pulling. And so the book is designed as a field guide, meaning you don't have to read it like cover to cover. If you want to, that's fantastic. Uh, but each 
section and chapter is meant to be a standalone. So if you're trying to understand the income approach or what, you know, these people keep talking about a discounted cash flow. What is that? What does it mean? We have a chapter on that. If you want to understand the market approach, there's a chapter on that. And each chapter really is, is standalone. Um, we've, it's, it's gotten really good reviews and not just from our, our spouses and loved ones. <laughs> um, you know, outside groups have read it and the, the thing that they keep bringing up time and time again is how approachable we make the content. And, and that for us is really the highest praise because that's what we were, that's what we were aiming for. Um, and, and so you can, there's a link to the, the book and you can find out more about the book. If you go to barrydunn.com backslash valuation, mm-hmm. the other thing that you'll find there is we, we've got a tool on the website and the tool is really um, designed to, it, it's built off of some of the concepts in the book, but it's designed to create an analytical tool for business owners to go in and do a self-assessment on different areas of risk in their business and see how they stack up. And based on that information, it'll give you a sense of whether or not you're kind of like an average multiple in your industry, below average or above average, and why. And so, again, barrydunn.com backslash valuation um, to check out and learn more about both those resources. And if you're below average, you should call the valuation group right away. Absolutely. <laughs> and we can get you back into the fat part of the normal curve. Yeah. And, and if you're above average, it's still worth a conversation to figure right. out, like, are you really that much above average? Right. Um, and and how do you stay there? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so a lot of great content. I mean, the what's going on in valuations today? What's the future? Books? tools. Thank you so much for talking with us today, Seth. It was a pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for reaching out. I would encourage you know people who are listening, if there are other things you want to hear about, reach out, let us know. Because the, you know, one of the things we love at Very Done is getting feedback right from our clients so we can figure out better ways to meet your needs. So thanks for the time. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Uh, catch us here next time on Outsource Accounting Insights with more exciting topics. Okay.